170. How about a 170 finish? One hundred and thirty-two. Sixteen. Sixteen points away. Game shot and a match. And he gets a job Scott done. Taylor. Sam Cherrick shakes his hand. Scott Taylor takes a point. A four-one success for Taylor that sees him storm to the top of the table. Six points along with Sean McDonald, who will be in action against Taylor in a couple of games time. Fallon Sherrick made to pay for all those missed starts at double 14 in total, many of them across the first couple of legs. And before Taylor returns to meet McDonald, it's Lee Budgin versus Berry Van Peer in a few minutes time. Budgin, Berry require 80. Won by Van Peer, 4-2 last night. Double top, just shuffling it across slightly. Game shot on the second he line. Uses Barry Vampire. That angle, a rabbit out of a hat. Could we add that to the list of big numbers missed when I say there's been a lot going because it certainly wasn't the target. 121. Yeah, on that occasion. Barry required 20. Could be more of a help than a hindrance. Doesn't want to go chasing around. Game and he doesn't. shot and he the match. He wins the race Barry in this Vampire. match. A 4 2 success for Barry Vampire, who becomes the third player in this group to make it onto six points and he leaves Lee Budgin stranded on two at the foot of the pile. An average just short of 89 from Vampire. Decent finishing stats as well. Couple of those checkouts around the 70 to 80 mark. That was a high and he joined Scott Taylor and Sean McDonald on six points in Group B and that pair will do battle for top spot after the break. Sean McDonald nicknamed the Punisher. That was kind of the story of yesterday as well. He was jumping in at every opportunity that was presented to him. Game shot on the first line. That trend. I, Sean McDonald. I had a bit of a chat with him earlier and I congratulated him. I says, I thought you played really well. I enjoyed watching you play yesterday. He goes, second. Bullseye. Game oh, shot on the second line. Scott Taylor. Favourite finish. Kind of an app finish. And that darts quite nicely moved to the side. He's having to just shuffle across a little bit to open up the angle. Game. And he's shot. taken it out. No trouble Scott at all. Taylor. No sweat for Scott Taylor. Who once again punishes an opponent, opponent for missing bucket loads of darts at double. 15 by Sean McDonald in that one. Squandered at the outer ring. Scott Taylor filled his boots. Said thank you very much and march to the top of the table. He's the first player on to eight points. Berry Van Peer in action next, looking to join him. But Fallon Sherrick, MBE, about to try and join the race for the top three. Do stay with us. Two. To pick up the point she so valuably needs. 44 remaining. 28 remaining. Game, and she takes shot, it out. and the match. Fallon Don't mind Sherrick. that shot. Going for an 8 or a 16. Many players do it on the 10 or a 6. Fallon Sherrick securing a dart at double and taking it out and winning for the first time tonight. A 4-1 success. Comprehensive victory over Barry Vampire. Really did sharpen up her doubling after all those misses in the first match. And it means this group is going to be gripping for the rest of the night. Scott Taylor on 8. Three players on six. Strap yourselves in what's going to be a thrilling finale in Group B. Even entertain doing the same thing. Well, thank goodness he didn't, but... 98. He has to hope that Budgeon Lee required does not 40. nail tops. It's been a bizarre bout. Budgeon has been Game, shots, doing bizarre and the things. Match. Lee Budgeon. Somehow managed to get a win over Sean McDonald and close the gap on the Scotsman. And two of the players in the field. He's just two behind. Two points separate second place and bottom place in this group. After that win for Lee Budgeon, it's going to be a real grandstand finish in Group B, which will return with Scott. Taylor looking to win to qualify when he faces Berry Van Peer after the break.
Ability. You require it's not, 84. You shouldn't win it just because you've got a dart at it. It's not a race to who gets to the double first. It's a race to who hits the double first. That's what Scott Taylor's been doing. Ball's right. Oh, Game shot on the fourth play. Perfectly. Very vampire. Very vampire. Scott, you require 190. Because if he does lose, be on, a, on a negative leg difference. This is an opportunity he's earned after responding to that 180 for Barry Van Pia. Game shot oh, on the sixth play. what a finish from Scott, Scott Taylor. Taylor. Barry Van Pia had a maximum in that one and opened up the gap. You thought he was going to move on. Quiet, 116. He's going to get a dart. That tops for a place at finals night. 96. But that dart has been missed. Barry and now his opponent 54. will get two. If you think you know how this group's going to unfold, put it all on pause. Because this is about to banana bomb the whole thing. Double ten. And Game Barry Van Pia nails it. Barry Van And there is nothing sorted in Group B still. This is very, very rare at Super Series that nobody's through, nobody is out, and there are only four fixtures left to play. Scott Taylor has produced his best performance of the group and ended up losing. It's kind of ironic because in his other wins, he's actually not played too well and taken opportunities. Barry Vampire took his last dart in hand, double 10. He joins Taylor on eight points at the top of the table, and this group remains uncertain. Coming up next, Sean McDonald faces Fallon Sherrick. 100. Or the world match play. Something that's coming up next month, somewhere that Fallon Sherrick's going to be as well, hoping to defend Game that Sean women's world match play, play title. Fallon Sherrick. If finishes like that, she's going to be right in the mix. Seen. Sherrick for the match. Game, shots, and the match. And that was Fallon Sherrick. Good timing there from Fallon Sherrick. The big 180 there, the ton finish, the four from eight on the doubles. That was enough for Fallon Sherrick to keep herself well and truly in the running. It was the time of day yesterday where she found the best. And in that one, she found the best at the right times. Sean McDonald came into this top of the table. He's now outside the top three. And coming up next, Lee Budgen will hope to keep himself in the running as he takes on the now already qualified Scott Taylor. Lee required two. Next question, does he hit it? The Game answer is shot yes. And, and the Lee, match. Budgen Lee Budgen is very much in this fight for finals night. Scott Taylor, remember, he's already there, but Lee Budgen now right on the shoulder of the top three after beating the league leader, Budgen, bottom of the table, pretty much all throughout this group, has just now leapfrogged the man who was top of the table going into tonight, Sean McDonald, who is going to need a 4-0 win against Berry Van Pier, or he can wave bye-bye to Saturday's session. That's coming up after the break. A lot of opportunities Sean, tonight and presented a lot of gifts to people. He's just had one return. He's a big ask, 1-2-1. One, It'll only be a dart of the ball if you can hit the treble 17. It is. What a saviour this would be. Game shot on the first Absolutely Sean nowhere. McDonald. Sean McDonald hits a group saving 1-2-1 one, one finish. Sean McDonald. Game shot on the second lay. And that Very vampy. is that. And you can see that he knows it. Sean McDonald, well, he would not have expected his night to go this way. He, he required 28. He requires 60. Lee Budgen. If he wins his last match, that's if McDonald wins this one. He'll top the group. <laughs> this is a guy who thought he was out. Game, shot, and, McDonald and the match, has Sean won the McDonald. Match. So that's a very real possibility. It's a, a, a kind of shallow victory for Sean McDonald. It doesn't result in him qualifying for finals night. Barry Van Pier getting to two legs has secured that spot for him. So the man who has been beaten is the winner in that one. And the winner in the next one will go through along with Scott Taylor and Barry Van Peer. It's Fallon Sherrick against Lee Budgen coming next. 40. A double top. Game shot on the second lay. Fallon Sherrick. Just halfway there. 
Probably Nakoi, this one. 48. She's yet to miss a double in this match. Again, goes for that 16 and 8 segment without any care which one it goes in. Doesn't care which yeah, double she goes on the for. Third leg. Because she can Found hit them all. Her. And she hasn't given Lee Budgent a single dart a double in this game. It's one dart to seal an emphatic win. 50. Lee would have secured Sherrick's spot in Saturday's session. Does Budgin breathe again? Last chance. 31. He doesn't take the chance. So Sherrick can seal 20. it. Double 10 to do so. Double five. Ten. Lee requires 60. She was three out of four. But now she's missed four for the match. Lee Budgin has now missed four to stay in the match. 14. Make that five. And double five will complete the field Fallen for finals night. Fallen requires 10. Don't miss the big number. Double two. And Game, Fallon shot, is and through the to the Fallon finals. Sherrick. Sherrick seals her Saturday spot and tops Group B in doing so. A thumping 4-0 win when it really mattered. She turned up. What a performance. 92.49 the average. Did the damage early on. Missed a few darts in getting over the line. But get over the line she did. Top of the table and through to finals night to cap what has been a memorable evening for her and reflecting on tonight's incredible action Matthew Edgar is alongside Henry Deacon thank you very much Chris Fallon Sherrick through in the end and breathe after what has been a night littered with drama what a night and credit to every single player who made this happen tonight because everyone played the part in what was a fantastic group. Lee Budgen at the end there, what a big effort from him. He came into that bottom of the table, he could have leapfrogged everybody and actually won the group. And when he came into this tonight and he started off the way he did, it looked like he had no chance. But in a group like we've got here where everyone was just beating each other and there seemed to be an element of inconsistency in picking up the results. No one could string back-to-back -back results together and get something going and get on a bit of a form line. That They always seem to be that element of doing what we've seen in terms of how this table's broken down. We nearly had every player tied on eight points. Very nearly that, but Fallon Sherrick, it's been some night for her. The news broke just after 10 o'clock this evening that she's been awarded an MBE in the King's Birthday Honours List for her services to the sport of darts. And I suppose it must be a little bit difficult going into it in, under these circumstances because when something like that comes out, obviously it's going to be... Obviously, and then you've got to go out there and perform at, at the highest level still. Then it must be difficult when you have things like that going on to then go out and still perform. No, I think this was actually perfect for her. I think this is the place you'd probably want to really be because I said on the start of the show that this scenario here, when you come in here, you don't come in here with your mobile phone, you come here by yourself, you don't have guests, anything like that. She'll be in that back room only with those players that she was playing tonight. They're the only people she's going to be interacting with, that and the players' marshal. And she's not going to be reading messages on social media. She's not going to be getting messages or phone calls from family and friends who maybe didn't know the upcoming news. Fallon would have known the news coming up into this situation. But the people around her may not have known and they would have been reaching out to her at this period of time. She's going to be a very busy lady when she leaves here. But I think this was the perfect place to be completely away from all of that and focus on what she loves to do, which is get the reps in on the dartboard. And then tomorrow night, obviously, through to the finals. It, will it feel different, though, now? Because it's going to be the first time she's going to play on a stage in front of a crowd since, obviously, the announcement. It shouldn't do. N nothing really feels different. We always get in these situations where we think we're going to feel different when something happens. How many times does someone win the World Championship, for example, and they go, it doesn't feel like it actually happened to me because they'll, they'll realise it years later. And that's what's going to happen with Fallon. She's going to feel exactly the same and it's years later. She's coming with a mission this week, which was to get time on the board and get as much match practice as she can to get ready for that Women's World match play next month. She's now got six days of darts, not just a five. Most certainly. And her last task on this Friday night is to have a chat downstairs. He's, uh, she's with Chris.
Fallon, uh, your evening started with some incredible news and it ended in incredible fashion. Had to beat Lee Budgett and you did it emphatically. What a performance. How are you feeling after that? Uh, I'm very happy uh, after that performance, you know, because it was like pretty much whoever won that game and I was like, do you know what, just focus. And especially after my first game tonight, I just thought, oh, no, don't, don't you know, bottle it on the last night. Um, so I'm really happy, you know, that I come through on that last game. And yeah, no, absolutely buzzing with the news. And I was just trying to probably come down from that uh, at the beginning of the night because I was just like, oh, OK, calm down. <laughs> You've had to deal with sort of more hype and pressure and sort of distractions possibly than most other dark players. Was this another night where you had to do that and try and put it back to the back of your mind and just get on with playing darts? Yeah, definitely. It kind of reminded me of like the worlds again, you know, when you have like something big happen and it's trying to, you know, you still got to play, you got to focus and stuff like that. So it was kind of like, okay, right, you've had your five minutes, calm down, you know, you don't get too engrossed with what's gone on. You can do that when you get home, uh, just try and focus. So yeah, no, I think, you know, with everything that's gone on and stuff like that in my career, I think it kind of helped a little bit tonight. And it's tough playing a full week here at the Super Series. It's the first time you've backed yourself to do that, so it must be a, a real reward to make it to Saturday. Yeah, no, I'm knackered. Like, um, but I'm still, you know, giving it my best and will give 100% like until the end and stuff like that. But, yeah, no, I'm really happy that I picked to do the week um, because it's actually shown me, you know, my ability is still there. You know, I'm having some really, really good averages and good games and there's spells of brilliance. And then obviously there's spells of you're not consistent. So now I know obviously what I need to work on and stuff and I can progress throughout the year now. Well, well done. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Fallon there speaking to Chris Murphy. Let's talk about the other two qualifiers now that made it through to tomorrow night's final. Beginning with Barry Van Pina, he came up to the balcony before the beginning of that last match. You could tell he was happy to be through, but you can tell that he is by no means happy of his performance levels this week. I agree. I've agreed all week. He's got through. He's done the minimum task. Who knows what will happen tomorrow? He might find the Barry Van Pia that's been playing well sort of all well season, really. It's not been this week. The week won't define his year, but it might be something he can add on to his year because I wouldn't be surprised to see Barry Van Pia turn up and play as well as he has been throughout the year and actually win the title tomorrow. As for Scott Taylor, last time we saw him at finals night here at the Live Lounge in Series 3, he put in his best performances of the week there, averaged 109 in the finals. So, OK, again, I think another player who possibly wasn't overly pleased with his performance over two days, but you go into Saturday night, he's got good experiences on that stage. I don't think I've ever known a Saturday night like it where we've got so many players going through or going through, like, almost disappointed to be going through. They've came here to get to Saturday, they're in Saturday, but they're more worried about the performance rather than the results. There's one guy who's not in that situation, Jim Long. And he's had a couple of days rest as well. So let's see what's happening then tomorrow and see the breakdown of the two groups. Group one, Jim Long, Jamie Kenning, Scott Taylor. But I think the eyes are instantly drawn on group two. Alex Moore, Fallon Sherrick, Barry Van Pier. That's going to be fast. That's going to be furious. That's going to be hard to separate. It's going to be a very entertaining night. We've not been able to really separate any of these groups. Leg difference has come into play tonight. It came into play on Wednesday and pretty much on group c as well it's been a very very tight group there's not really been a front runner in terms of dominating the wins but again i'm going to bring the guy up again because when we're looking at the line of performance and we're looking at the sheer ability and the quality that they have shown so far it's jim long again all signs are pointing that way see you on that stage tomorrow night for the finals it's going to be an interesting evening we are most certainly looking forward to it. So I hope you can spend your Saturday night with us. Make it a day. 7.30 we begin on the Super Series YouTube channel before going live on Sporty Stuff TV from 10pm. Well, what a night it has been for Fallon Sherrick. Awarded an MBE in the King's Birthday Honours List for her services to the sport of darts. And then here at the Super Series, sealing her place on Saturday night. Bye-bye.